Interesting. There's a lot of drama going on in the chess world right now. Okay. But what I want to know is if you can cheat without getting caught. So I built this device to prove it. There's been a variety of <coughs> theories <coughs> running around out there. And I want to replicate these in my lab to see if there's any substance to these claims at all. I want to put to rest the claim that you can have a device on you, or in you, that can help it's you win out? at a okay, game of chess. Out? Okay, sorry. I'll turn it down a little bit. Sorry. Okay, let's go. Let's get to the bottom of this. But first, we need to analyze some footage. When doing some research on this topic, I found a clip to show us what we're up against. Well, it is, yes. A uh, pack of chewing gum. Everybody getting their one? This seems like... I've concluded that the judge is using a combination of a metal detector and an anti-spy device. What is an anti-spy device, you might ask? Anti-spy devices are typically used by regular people in an Airbnb setting where they want to find hidden cameras because they can detect Wi-Fi or Bluetooth signals that these devices use. Oh, I, I, but Captain, oh, I wasn't aware of, I was not aware of this. Oh, I didn't know about this. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I never thought about doing that when I stayed in Airbnb. Okay. How do you actually cheat at chess? There's been some theories running around online, but they all have one thing in common. They use a little vibrating motor that Correct. is similar to yes, what you have true. in your smartphone. This motor can be used to send messages to the cheater from a remote location. To control the motor, we'll use this microcomputer that has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on it to send messages to our chess cheater remotely. And really, that's basically it. Obviously, we need a battery to power it. And I'm going to throw in this force sensor that the chess cheater can use in the field to disable the device temporarily mm. if he's being probed or whatever. Now that we have all these devices, okay. how does this work all together? Let me paint you a picture or maybe a moving video. You have two people involved, the chess player and the message sender. The message sender will observe the match and input all the moves into his computer. The message sender will then get an answer from the AI on the next best move. He'll send that message to the cheater's device through this web app that communicates to the device through Wi-Fi. The player then receives the message through coded vibrations from the device. The player then makes his next move. We now know how the player would cheat, but can they get it past security? I've gone ahead and bought baloney to simulate human flesh. We're gonna see how many layers <laughs> okay. of baloney it takes to trump these security devices. Kind of like baloney an issue or <laughs> I don't know, somewhere else you think of it. Where would you hide your chest cheating device? Let me know in the comments below <laughs> or don't. Speaking of chest cheating devices, I've gone ahead and made this identical pawn piece that you can easily sneak into any location. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not so easily. To test this, all we're gonna do is take our chess cheating device and the baloney and just stack baloney on it and get our cheating detection devices to see how many layers of baloney it takes to prevent these devices from detecting the circuitry underneath. Well, we got everything we need. Let's go test it. Before we get into it, I'm going to test this device four different ways. The first way is going to be on and receiving a message. Okay. I'm going to do the detection as the message is being received. <laughs> Probably the worst case scenario. The second method, I'm going to have the device on but not receiving a message. So in an idle state. The third method, I'm going to put the device into a low power mode, also known as sleep, to see if that affects the readings at all. Okay. And then the fourth is just going to be off entirely. Okay. Okay. Okay, so still detecting, okay. Okay. Eight, okay. Might not be detecting. It's not detecting it, it right? Slices of bologna, two and a half centimeters of bologna. Let's try more sensitivity. 
Oh, there we go. Sensitivity level at three. <laughs> Ten balonies in a pack, did you know that? That's it? Oh, if you were 10 balonies thick. That's, it only takes 10 pieces of baloney? Skinnier than your foot. You could hide it in your shoe. Chances are you're not getting caught. You usually don't go right on the piece. That's that's the it? Piece, the piece of meat. The person. So you would hover over. I thought it would take a lot ten, more pieces of, 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 uh, of baloney. Yeah, nine, it kind of gets it. Let's say yes at nine. Beeping more. Go back to eight. Yeah, so eight, eight is a definite. Nine's like a maybe. Ten's a no. Let's start with nine. Nine balonies. Yeah, yes, kind of. Nine. We're at ten. Going back to sensitivity level four. Nothing. Er. Nothing. Still nothing. Sensitivity level five. But I don't know. This is kind of scary. Trial. Nothing. Nothing. This device probably just sucks, to be honest. I made a prediction earlier that the on and receiving test would be the worst case scenario. Well, I was right. All the other tests came back with essentially the same results. The only unexpected result was the anti-spy device during the idle test. So if it's idle, this is level 5, Wi-Fi sensitivity, just yeah! nothing. So this won't work if there's no signals being sent. So if you're cheating, just... Don't send a message while they're getting scanned. Easy. After dozens and dozens of minutes of stacking and unstacking baloney, I finally had some results. If you're gonna cheat, 27 millimeters is about how far in your body or wherever <laughs> you need it to go, so that's pretty big. You could uh, like hide it under your foot, I suppose. Oh. <sighs> yeah, you could put it at like the bottom of your foot. My foot's about uh, forty-six. Wait, what? That's that's feasible. Wait, what the heck? Wait, this was funny for a second. Wait, now I'm like, wait, what? You could uh, like hide it under your foot, I suppose. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, you could put it at like the bottom of your foot. My foot's about. They are, oh my god, that's actually really scary. The reason the reason that's scary, you guys. The reason it's scary is because like they do not scan the shoes. They don't ask people to take off their shoes or do, do anything of that nature. And this looks like I mean I, I like joking aside, this looks very real. Like y you could like I know they're showing like a chess piece, which is impractical, but this is not a joke actually. Uh, Forty six. That's that's feasible. What an interesting day. What an interesting day. Here are the results on screen now. In conclusion, 10 layers of baloney trumped both of our security devices. I'm a little surprised that our metal detector didn't do better. In the instruction manual, it said that it had 10 centimeters of penetration depth. That's four inches. We only got two and a half centimeters. Whether or not they were actually expecting me to use four inches of baloney is another story altogether. <laughs> but I feel like it should have performed a little bit better than it did. Okay. I'm going to give this a definite maybe as an option for cheating in chess. Though you really shouldn't do it at all. This video is for educational purposes only. Don't try this. Don't, don't do it. What would you all do to get this device past security? Let me know in the comments below. And, as always please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Oh man, that's a great video. What can I say? That's a fantastic video. Jeez, like, wow. But it's, that actually, I'm going to be honest, that really scares me a little bit. Because like, they're, they're, you're saying that's like under, um, that it's like that, that you could very easily do that. You could put something in your shoe and nobody would even catch it. That's actually, like, that actually makes me really scared in a sense. Um, 
So I, I don't know whether this is legitimate or not, but it's, assuming that it is to some degree, that's, yeah, pretty scary. Pretty scary looking uh, looking at the future of, of chess and what is and is not possible. So we'll see.